What is sackable offense, by the way? Like I would sack people too. <laughs> <laughs> Your fullbacks are coming back. Like let's terminate Regulion's loan and be like, oh, oops, my bad. <laughs> I read the wrong scan. You know, Arteta no, is I, I probably agree. a success because of the system that is put in place, and that is a huge factor, and we can never discount that. I think. Uh, I think okay. I just I have to come in here. And fuck you guys. <laughs> Towards the season, it was so sad that like I was always looking forward to the next season. I'm like, yes, something will happen next season. Ineos came in, like you know, we we made the headlines with Omar Barada. We are in the headlines for all the wrong reasons for with Dan Ashworth and so on and so forth. Um, I want to ask you both, like Wamsi and said, do you see Ten Hag being as our coach next season? Like, and if you see so, what? Should the outcome be for the rest of this season for him to be there? Go I want to go first, right? And uh, I th- okay. Here's the weird part. I think he's gonna be in charge because most of our management setups above him they haven't started, and I think they need stability in like the coaching coaching department and like you know player structure a little bit and not change too much. I think once that structure above, I think it's gonna take all of next season. Once all that settles. Ten Hag's contract is due to expire. Apparently, all the coaches' contracts are due to expire, yep. and a lot of player contracts are also all due to expire, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if there's a time, I think they might focus on infrastructure this year. Uh, if if we make top four, yes. But if you know, if if it goes downhill from here, he's definitely not keeping his job. But you know, if if I you know you know how Ten Hag is, right? When when his when his job is on the line, we hit start hitting a patch, and you know, random random goals start falling from everywhere. So I don't know. I I think I think it could be a. I think he could stay in charge next season just because just because of how I'm seeing our Ashworth hasn't started. We haven't found a sporting director yet. You know, we haven't found head of our recruitment yet. We haven't, dude. We don't have a head of physio. We apparently, we apparently let that guy go after he said we were going to have two left backs, and you know we <laughs> fucked up the good one. I mean, <laughs> that is sackable offense, by the way. Like I would sack people too. <laughs> <laughs> Your fullbacks are coming back. Like let's terminate Regulion's loan and be like, oh, oops, my bad. <laughs> I read the wrong scan. I'm like, what you do? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to come into it, but did you hire Gary O'Driscoll, like our medical doctor? And did he say that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they poached. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no not go. him, not him, not him, oh, not him. No, oh. they, they, no, 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 they fucked up the. No, not him, not him. Okay. So okay. they got him to like build a recruit department, and they left that uh, head head one head guy go after he said this shit. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Immediately <laughs> after they let him go. But yeah. like, so maybe maybe against Brentford when we play against Brentford next time because he's on a red card. So, oh. I'm just glad about that one bit, but <laughs> <laughs> watch him post on Instagram supporting us. <laughs> he does that. He's, shit. <laughs> he's such a fucking confused soul. Like, sorry for digressing, but like that dude, yeah, has literally gone all over England now. <laughs> like, he's he's been with us. Yeah, only like, got recalled by Spurs and then sent to Brentford. And like I'm sure next season, until his his contract expires, he'll just keep going on loan because I don't think Ash trusts yeah. him at all. Bro, before that he's playing under Simeone randomly before <laughs> before he came to us. Yeah, <laughs> that shit also happened. <laughs> oh, Wamsi, you are saying yeah. just going back to all of it. You are saying that like, regardless of the finish, you see Ten Hag being there with a good probability. Yeah, yeah, just because you know he adds some stability and you know there's a his contract is going to be up. We're going to save some money and maybe which I think they're going to give him that season that he needs with the proper support structure. That he's been craving so far, and we'll come to the structure later. So far, if we do well, yeah, we'll come yeah. to the structure in a bit. But Sid, do you agree? Do you have similar thoughts on this? Not thing? fully agreeing. Um, so I think it'll depend a lot on how the season ends, and if we end up in top five, and if that's enough for the Champions League, then Ten Hag just might edge through and keep his job. But I will. I sort of agree with Vamsi on how he's. Uh, like how Ineos have been acting, but that's where that, that's also where I disagree, because Ineos have been very decisive in how they are making their decisions, and I feel like with Jim Ratcliffe, he like how he's talking about the stadium and how he's bringing in, uh, he brought in Brailsford, then he brought in Berard, then probably we're gonna get Dan Ashworth, right? The speed at which they are making decisions, I don't think they want to let one more season go in just 
another rebuild another rebuild and so on so i think at the end of the season they will want to have a manager that they completely trust irrespective of what happens if it if it means ten hag is out then i think they'll already keep looking and and, and the thing is we already discussed this before but right now a lot of big clubs are on the market for a good manager like if you look at liverpool maybe bayern will also look at a new manager barca will also look at a new manager and this is when like the big manager like turnaround will happen right and if we again wait for one more season and we miss the bus on these good managers who might be willing to move right now then the rebuild will be slowed again and i'm pretty sure like the new leadership knows this and so it will depend on how much they trust ten hag by the end of the season and if they see him actually learning from his mistakes and building up better not just getting better results but like how we are getting those results and how we are playing them how we are playing controlling games going forward like today was a good step up in terms of how we played not just the result right so if that continues and if we get a good finish by the end of the season then i think ten hag might just stay otherwise i have a feeling that he might be moved down and we'll get another manager to like sort of plug in with the rebuild that's going to happen over the next few seasons yeah i mean I, for me if it's if no champions league football probably like inios is probably going to cut it um and try to go for a new manager but more than anything i'm I mean in yours or not or like under even Ed Woodward we've always went for a really good manager like it's only David Moyes was sus bro in all of this and yeah. Ole because Ole came in as an interim manager but every big nah, manager Ragnik was also sus bro I mean those are all interim was managers also right? sus. there's are interim managers that yeah. came into like as patchwork but like if you think about like the big changes there were three big changes in my opinion like one was Louis van Gaal Jose Mourinho and then Eric ten Hag all three of them were had their distinct personalities had were equally successful like ten hag was probably the least successful of the lot but they have done enough to warrant that they are good managers to come in and they all of them came in and are are struggling still and for me the problem is something deep within that needs to be changed i want personally i want united to be at a place where like you know chelsea of the past or real madrid right now where they're not too dependent on the coach i know it's weird coming from a united fan because we've always like you know put the coach at the pedestal of everything we got lucky for 26 years but we will never get that lucky ever again we can never even if jose mourinho could not with his charm and charisma do it i don't think anyone can come in and just like be that demi god figure even if we get in pep or arteta i feel like we're brown bound to fail even though they're like really great managers because we don't have the setup in place to make them successful and doesn't really matter if ten hag stays or not i want for 24 25 i want united to be at a place where we are making those changes like chelsea under roman and real madrid of current where there is a lot more emphasis on infrastructure like you know on recruitment yeah. not just going and buying like random people like because we think that they are marketable we can sell more jerseys and stuff like that that shouldn't be the case i want pe- our recruitment to be so solid that we buy good character players who are who fit into the squad who fit into the structure of the things um ten hag in or out i really don't care I, for me personally it only depends if we are playing if i think this is a good place for us to evaluate him whatever happened so far whatever happened he's in a place where he can still turn it around i want to see if he has that in him to like turn it around or not um and we'll just wait and watch do you guys agree with all that yeah and i i do agree with that and also like if we look at any of these major rebuilds that have happened at liverpool or arsenal or city right they all had the infrastructure in place but they had to give the manager like a few seasons to sort of even build through it right like even pep took like two or three seasons arteta is still taking his time klopp also took like two three seasons to get on with it and like actually get a good like title winning competing squad and ten hag has had the worst uh like setup compared to all of these players uh, all of these managers and yeah i mean if we are going in the right direction of like building good infrastructure and then it sort of makes sense 
to focus on infrastructure and keep a manager but i mean i would prefer the system where we are manager agnostic and just do what we want to do yeah you know artist is probably a success because of the system that is put in place and that is a huge factor and we can never discount that i think uh i think okay i just i have to go in here fuck you guys <laughs> <laughs> I wonder yeah, how, how, how to light a so, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'll tell you put the system in place. So what the fuck are you guys on about? <laughs> like, I'll tell you literally put the system in, for, for, in in the place. Like when he came on, we had those uh frauds in Rahul Sanheli who paid 72 million for Pepe and like all of these flawed transfers and he was working under those guys. When he came on, he actually put the system in place. But, he had like, a rough patch, but then he was able to convince the uh the whole like you know the management and everybody about his skills about his long term vision breaking that down convincing them okay this is how it's going to go and stuff like that so i i i genuinely don't care about ten hag and i do want him to stay forever because i don't think he is it but uh, please don't compare him to arteta <laughs> i'm not comparing ten hag to arteta bro i'm just saying Water that situation or and and to comsi's point you're never getting arteta bro and you know i don't whatever you say <laughs> We we don't want like we don't want Arteta. We don't want Arteta, honestly. I mean, because I feel like he is yeah. he is cut from that Arsenal cloth, and like I don't think he would ever want to come. And I think it's not good Juju to get a manager who is like so involved with another rival club. Get in. Jose Mourinho is one of the true professionals who could like literally go to all four clubs and manage them. Snake is the one. Snake is the one. <laughs> but um, otherwise. But what nah, about winner or snake, whatever, right? Same shit. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. you can't. Only you can't place he hasn't won is fucking Tottenham before a final. I, I feel like he's so salty about it. Yeah, yeah. you can't question Jose Mourinho. Bro. Ruining his CV. Yeah, yeah. he's a snake. Yeah, dude, I'm looking forward to the documentary. By the way, oh god, it's gonna be fucking nuts. But <laughs> he's going to do an expose so bad like Jim is going to fucking hide bro. <laughs> but uh, but, yeah, but I want to close thoughts Nihal on it's this right. by the way our manager dilemma right. Yeah. So you said manager agnostic recruitment Sid said you know uh, invest in infrastructure maybe availability of managers. I agree with both of you right and and I think a decision has to be made I don't know I don't know who makes that decision at the club, right? Uh, like, what kind of uh, what kind of style does Manchester is Manchester United going to stand for in the next five to ten years? Like, maybe like medium to long term, and and you know you recruit players according to it, um, and you know a manager is somebody who either like he's like a catalyst to that process, right? And I think Brighton have that philosophy like totally nailed down. Like they they'll get manager after manager after manager, player after player after player, but their philosophy is set. Uh, their recruitment feeds into it, and their manager is just a catalyst to it. If we can build something like that, right? Or you know, we can we can at least have a blueprint to something like that. Then you know, it, we can we can get somewhere. And a manager is just one part to it, and a system is just one part to it, and a player is just one part to it, and they all just you know come together as a club, right? And the club we love and support. Everybody has their own club for that, right? Because it stands for something. And it's sort of crazy that you know, as United fans, we've had that identity crisis where seasons have been written off, and we don't know who we are anymore, right? And we're fighting about what manager is going to be in, and you know, which player is going to be in and out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think, oh. The, I think the identity point is where I'm also having like a tough time trying to digest all of this because for 26 years we've we've hid behind the identity of a person as the identity of the club, right? It was Ferguson running the show. It was Ferguson's style of play. It was Ferguson's players. It was Ferguson's teams. Like he recycled a bunch of teams. Like he went through players. Like he spanned over like multiple football careers, right? and we we are never we after post ferguson era we were always thinking that we are going to get someone in who is like ferguson who we are going to stand behind and like who is going to take us through and we missed the train by like not going aggressively for club because club would have been perfect like for that kind of like if we wanted to model ourselves as that kind of club and honestly these 10 years of obscurity i mean to have some perspective right like in these 10 years we've won two carabao cups one fa cup one europa league 
we've we've had more champions league campaigns than other teams in the league right now right so even in these 10 years although we are having this like very tough identity crisis at this point because we don't know how we play we don't know who this is because it didn't go to our plan because the manager there was never another savior who who walked in and we hit behind them so maybe this 10 years of like this randomness with some trophies sprinkled in between is decent enough because now we can go back and actually never look for hiding behind like a manager we need to pivot and i think the ownership is in the right place where they're thinking through thinking about this the right way they want to model it more around like a brighton like a city like an arsenal who have had very good structures in place and one if they get lucky with the catalyst manager that comes in and walks in boom it works out really well right like and i want us to pivot to that kind of thing and hopefully we do uh, and no disrespect to arteta like maybe arteta in a weird structure like a united structure could still be a success we just won't ever know like i feel like the backing that he got from croenkes and edu probably like helped him you know get through uh, a very weird patch you know remember that season where he lost the first three games and they st- they still backed him yeah. and then then like he went all the way to the end and like poorly like crashed out to spurs it was unfortunate but like although they still backed him and then he still came back next season had a really great run and now he's doing it again in the third season after that right so hopefully yeah. we get to that stage where we are thinking about where we give more credit to people behind the manager and i think that is where the true success lies in this modern age sorry for my long winded monologue fair no, enough no, fully fully agree yeah <laughs> fuck you <laughs> <laughs> no okay so that's united i think uh, we all would want eric ten hag to stay for different reasons wamsi for uh, believing in him me for actually believing in that he will never change and the uh, shitstorm will continue and the other two 